I've had a few verses come to my heart this morning, and uh, I believe they go together. Um, and I certainly can't encourage you to share if I'm not willing to share. And so, uh, you know, I don't know what all the Lord has for us this morning. But um, these these scriptures, and I may not quote them exactly, but I believe I have the, the thrust of the uh, verses. One is in the uh, Old Testament, I believe it's in Deuteronomy, where the word says, those things which are hidden belong to the Lord. Those things which are revealed belong to us, and that we might walk in the light of that word, that we might walk in his heart and in his will. And um, then I was thinking of, uh, in conjunction with that, uh, a verse we are so familiar with, without faith it's impossible to please God. For they that cometh to him must believe that he is, and he is in every sense, uh, not just that he exists, but that he is God and he alone. And that his son is Lord and and he alone is Savior. There's no other name given under heaven by which men can be saved. That he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And I can, never think, I can never think of that verse without thinking of what the Lord told Abraham. Speaking of rewards, he says, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. We cannot seek him from our heart and he not touch our hearts. He's faithful in his love and his mercy to reach out to that seeking heart. But uh, I was thinking in conjunction with the service this morning, just waiting on the Lord together, those things which are hidden belong to him and we can rest in that. Uh, we, don't, we don't have to know and understand everything about this journey we're in, this pilgrimage. Thank God we can rest in the fact that he is and that he loves us beyond measure and that he is a rewarder of those who cry out to him from their heart. God loves us. We cannot begin to fathom. Well, all you have to do is look at the cross. God help us. May that be revealed to our hearts in a greater and greater measure. The love that poured out from God the Father and His precious Son on the cross to us. What He did there for us. But then it does say, and, that, and that's, uh, I, I guess was thinking that with respect to those things which are revealed belong to us. And isn't that the cry of our heart? Lord, reveal Yourself to me. I want to know You. I want to know You in a greater measure. I want less of me and more of You. And as we cry out to the Lord, He hears and He answers. And He wants to answer here this morning. I guess that was the central thought of what I... It says those things which are revealed belong to us. The things the Lord reveals to me, yes, sometimes they're very personal and they're right where I'm at and what I need. But sometimes it may be that the thing that the Lord reveals and makes real to my heart, He wants me to share. He wants me to share with my brother and my sister. It can be a, you know, a, a word of encouragement, a word of faith that ministers from faith to faith and helps our brother and our sister take that next step that they need to take. So um, those things who were re revealed belong to all of us, to all of us, our brothers and our sisters. So this morning, if the Lord gives you a thought or if there's some way that the Lord in the last you know, few weeks has just revealed himself to you in a special way, ministered grace and faith to your heart, encouragement. If the Lord lays it on your heart, don't quench his spirit. Be, be encouraged. He will give you the grace. He'll give you the faith to come up here and to share it. Amen. Those things are which, reveal, which he reveals and belong to all of us. I'm thankful to be a part of the family of God of this body where he is our head and he loves us. So um, don't quench the spirit this morning. If the Lord just gives you a simple thought, share it. Because when he speaks, that, makes, that means everything. He can say more in just a very few words. 
by his spirit than we can give in dissertation after dissertation. It's, it's, uh, so if the Lord quickens you, that's, that's, I guess, and all of these things that the that Lord brought, these scriptures brought to my heart this morning, that was my central thought. Don't quench your spirit. Let's be free. We're family here. If the Lord gives you something, touches your heart with a thought, please feel free to get up and share it. Amen. Praise God. The Lord's here. And I praise Him. I, I just uh, appreciate what Carl said there, and, and I believe uh, what he said is, is so true, that uh, when the Lord shares something with us, you know it's actually the Lord. It's not just a good idea or maybe even a positive thought. When it comes from the Lord, it's Himself. And when He reveals Himself, when, when He reveals His Word, He's revealed Himself. And His words are words of life. His words are the same words that said, let there be light, and there was light. There is power in the Word of God. And there's strength. There's everything. His, his holiness, who He is, His character. It said the Word became flesh and He dwelt among us. He still dwells among us. He still speaks to us. And um, when Carl was speaking, Carl, I'm going to blame you for this, because it actually is just something that just came to me in the past couple of days, and I read it, and it blessed me so much. Um, and I, it came back to me actually when the chorus was up here singing and I was, you know, you're looking at all those you know, faces and the people worshiping the Lord. For someone to worship a God who cannot be seen is supernatural. For there to be life in the heart and faith given to a person to cause them to turn to God, they're born again and then they begin living their life for the one who created them. They finally find their real sense of purpose. That's when we find why we're here, is when, we've, when we find God, actually when He finds us. But in turn, when He finds us, He wants us to know Him. He wants to speak just like He spoke to Abraham. And He does speak just like He spoke to Abraham. In fact, it says, it says this is something I read the other day, if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And uh, the thing that I looked up that blessed me so much was, um, you know, if you go back and look at the account, there's several accounts of Abraham. You read about him in the New Testament, the Old Testament. And, uh, you know, when it talks about him, it said that he didn't consider the fact that his body was as good as dead or the deadness of Sarah's womb because God had made a promise to him that they were going to have a, a son. And the thing about it was, it wasn't just like he was middle age; He was old. It was done with. And the, the thing about it is, is when they were young and they were married, you know, and they're probably like everybody else, they're, they're happy, you're, you might be romantic, you're all excited and running around and, and you know, your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, 50s, 60s. After a while, they weren't young anymore. They went beyond middle age. They were old. But when they were young, they had no children. It said that he didn't consider the deadness of Sarah's wound. It was a reproach back then not to have an heir. And he was a man of God. He was a wealthy man. And God blessed him everywhere he went. He, he, he heard the voice of God, though. He said, God said, Abraham, leave your father's house and go to a land that I'm going to show you, right? And so, so what Abraham did is he heard God and he responded to God. The, the word says repeatedly that Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. When God speaks to our heart, there's life there. It gives us something to go on and we can step out in faith because uh, we are called to walk by faith and not by sight, right? But, but the Lord gives us an anchor. He gives us a foundation for which to believe. It's His Word. And when He calls us, it is no different than when He called Abraham. He is going to be with His people when He calls Him. And no matter what He takes them through, He's there. But anyway, you know, their whole life they'd had no children. Sarah was reproached. You know, they both, I mean, I mean it, they're not having a child. And then I'm sure at some point they realized we're really not going to have one. We are both old and we're beyond having children. But um, what blessed me is when I was seeing the people who were singing, and it says, if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to promise. We are the children of Abraham. And a man and a woman who could not have children, there are children praising God today because of the promise God made to Abraham. And we are that family. 
a supernatural God and a supernatural family with a supernatural faith. And it says even that the faith was first preached through Abraham before there was a tabernacle, a temple, even before Jesus Christ came to the earth, Abraham believed. Faith is the crucial ingredient. And it always, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when we hear God, we got a piece of God. we got something to go on. We've got something we can stand on, right? And, the, and the, same, the same faith you have to go by and I have to go by is the same faith that Abraham had. He had to believe God in the face of opposition and things that said, no, God's not going to do what he said he's going to do. No, but when God speaks, God means it. And when God makes a promise, it will happen. You know, I mean, it will happen. It's 100% guarantee. But I went back and read the account when the Lord made the promise to Abraham. And it's in Genesis 15. This is what it says. <clears throat> well, it says, After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. But there again, you have the word of God. This time, the word of God comes to him in a vision. God's not limited the way that he speaks to us. You know, you hear of people now, even like in the Muslim, uh, some of these Muslim countries, and there's no Bible, there's nothing. God will speak to them. Because God knows his people. He can speak to you in a desert where there's no one there. I mean, just sand and you. God can talk. He is not limited. But it says here, After this, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. And he said this, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield and your very great reward. But Abraham said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless and the one who will inherit my estate is Eleazar of Damascus. That was his servant. And Abraham said, You have given me no children. So a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him. Once again, the word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. And he took him. Now the Lord takes him outside. The Lord is very personal with us. He wants to be able to speak to us in a way where we can hear him. I mean, did he say, Abraham, walk outside for a second. I don't know what he did, but he said that the Lord took him outside. It says that Abraham, uh, the Lord called Abraham friend, right? He talked to him. He wants to talk to each one of us. And the thing of it is, is that's the way it's supposed to be. Our relationship with the Lord is, should be one to where there's, we lay our, our offering before him. We go to him. Many times we go to him in prayer and we're not, we don't sense his presence. But the Lord is there. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And when you, he said, come near to me and I'll come near to you. When we go to God, he sees it. He's drawn to us when we come to him because that's what he created us for. He created us to draw near to him and to have fellowship with him. And he wants to have fellowship with us and to the point to where it comes out in our lives and we can share, as Carl said, with others. Those are the things that are revealed. It's when he speaks to us. Anyway, this is what he, he says. And God took him outside and said, look up at the sky and count the stars. If indeed you can count them. Uh, back then, you know, there was no light pollution. Uh, I mean, it's like you can go to some of these areas where there's, there's no lights. And you go there where there's, you know, there's no full moon. It's just stars and sky like out in the desert. It's breathtaking. You can see the Milky Way. You can see millions of stars. And that night, whatever night it was, when God said, Abraham, look up there. This is what he says to him. He says, so shall your offspring be. Now, if you're like 100 years old and your wife has never had a baby, and the Lord says, you see that right there? That's what your offspring is going to be like. That is impossible. But God is a supernatural God. The same faith that Abraham had is the one that we have. And whatever God has promised each one of us, he has promised that it will come to pass. And it does not matter how impossible it seems. Our God is a God that does the impossible. Salvation is impossible. Man cannot be saved. That's like the disciples said, Lord, who can be saved? And Jesus said, with man it's impossible. With God, all things are possible. Not only can he save us, he can keep us. Not only can he keep us, when he makes a promise to us, it's going to come to pass. Right? It's going to come to pass because the Lord cannot lie. Anyway, so shall, so shall your offspring be. And this is what it says. Abraham believed the Lord, and he credited him as righteousness. He made, the, the God proclaimed an impossible promise to him. But, you know, 
You think about it today, in all the countries in the world or where, they're, where they worship the Lord this morning. I'm talking worship Him in spirit and in truth. Do you know to worship the Lord, it takes the Spirit of God to worship the Lord. He said, what did Paul say? He would sing with the Spirit and the understanding also. He said, I'll pray with the Spirit and the understanding also. Our communion with God is one of the Spirit. But when that's going on, there's worship going up, and you think about how many people were worshiping the Lord this morning, I would imagine that Abraham could see that. He says, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, and his wife too, by the way, Sarah. He could see, and can you imagine the people since Abraham's life that have come to faith, and it's funny that he's labeled as the father of faith. Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. And it says, and if you're Christ, if you belong to Christ, you are Abraham's children. You're heirs, according to the promise. Eleazar did not become his heir. We became the heir. If we have Christ, we are heirs. We're, we're in the brotherhood of Christ. We are children of God. And every promise God makes to us, he will bring it to pass. Everybody knows what happened, I mean, in the story. Later on, uh, Sarah conceived, and Isaac was born. He was a child, he was a son of promise, and that's what we are. We are the people of God, we are the children of God, and just as the Lord told Abraham, your offspring is going to be like those stars up there. It happened. We don't need to doubt the Lord. He is faithful. Praise God. Praise God. I believe some of my thoughts are in, in, line with, in line with some of the things that Steve shared about just being his children and how he deals with us, how he speaks with us. And um, I had a verse of scripture that's been kind of rumbling around the last couple of weeks and it's kind of come, come back to me uh, today. And uh, it's a very familiar scripture a lot of us heard growing up. Um, and it was the one over in 2 Corinthians uh, 13, verse 5, about examining yourselves. And... Um, you know, I think a lot of us that grew up under hearing that, that truth about examining ourselves, it was always in a con, a lot of times it was in a context of kind of the religious system about the Lord really through Brother Thomas and even Phil over the years has, has brought that truth out to kind of expose the religious system that, that really needs to examine. I mean, we all need to examine ourselves. But it's not just, it's not just for that, but it's all the examining. What I saw in this passage is it's for his children too examining ourselves is, is a continual thing that God's people do. And um, honestly, I used to look at that scripture, and I, it, it was so, um, I'm not saying it shouldn't be this way, but it was such a, it was almost kind of a fearful thing, and, it's, and the fear of the Lord is important in our lives, but I would look at that, examine yourselves, and think, God, you know, this, whether you'd be in the way, you know. And, um, but I don't know, and part of my burden to kind of, kind of share here is, is, is a much lighter, more, I don't know if that's the right word, a lighter view of this scripture, but this, this scripture really shows that it is for God's people day by day. The examining of ourselves is a good thing. Do, do we see that? Do we see the examining of ourselves as a good thing that God is, is purposing, working out these things in us? I, let, let me just read, um, read a few verses. Trust the Lord can help me uh, through this, get out what he wants. I'm going to start above that in verse 4. It says, for to be sure, he was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by God's power. We are weak in him, yet by God's power we will live with him in our dealing with you. Praise God. It's, it's okay to be weak because God's strong in his word and what he tells us. And I'll just read this uh, verse 5. It says, examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do, not, do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? That should encourage us right there. That Christ Jesus is in us. We examine, we examine ourselves. That means he's in us and with us. Um, he says, unless, of course, you fail the test. And I trust that you will discover that we have not failed the test. Praise God for that. Um, skip on down here. Um, another verse that really stood out to me, verse 8. says, for we cannot do anything against the truth, but for the truth. When God gives us truth... I mean, praise God, it's, it's, 
we, we, we're not against that truth. We're for that. As he, as he reveals his word and truth to, to us, we can't do anything else but agree. Can y'all say amen to that? I can say amen to his truth, but I don't know. I just, I just saw a real rest and peace in uh, this verse here. Um, it says, we are glad whenever we are weak, but you are strong. Praise God. When he, he shows us his word, we're weak, but in him we are strong. And our prayer is that you may be fully restored. I just thank God for this process and that he's got us in. And, um, you know, I was thinking too, we sang, um, we sang a couple songs. And one of the, the songs talked about his power being alive in us. And, you know, we really can't experience fully his power until we examine ourselves. There's an examining, a day-to-day examining that is based on his word. It's not, it's not self, but it's based on truth. And when we examine it, and God just, it's like he shines the light. And that's actually where the power becomes real and active. It's not just hearing it and say, oh, well, Lord, that's true. We examine ourselves in, in the light of that word. And then we walk in it, and that's when his power is revealed. Isn't that, isn't that encouraging? Praise God. Um, I appreciate the Lord this morning.